Once we find the rate law, we can do a little bit of calculus on the rate law and come up with what's called the integrated form or the integrated rate law. All of the integrated rate laws are given to you on the formula sheet for zero order, first order, and second order. Those are the only ones we're going to deal with integrated rate laws. So for example, you look on your formula sheet for a second order reaction, you have this formula. This formula tells you the concentration of the reactant A at some time and it also gives you the concentration of that same reactant A with the subscript of zero so that means at the start of the experiment in other words that's when the time is zero in the experiment so if we know the rate constant and we know the starting concentration we can calculate the later concentration depending on how long we let the reaction go. Or, here's a problem. We know this reaction is second order, so we're given that information, and we start with the concentration is 0.1 molar, and we know that after 500 seconds the concentration drops to 0.001 molar, we can calculate the rate constant K. So we're using the second order equation and we're just substituting in the later concentration is 0 0.001 molar the rate constant K we don't know the time is 500 seconds and the starting concentration is 0 0.10 molar so the only variable we don't know is the rate constant K. If we do a little algebra on this, bring all the numbers over to one side, solve for K, we're going to get 1.8, and we can use the shortcut. Because we know it's second order, 2 minus 1 is 1, throw a negative sign in front of it, that's what the molarity is going to be raised to, and we know it's always inverse units of time, so in this case, the time was measured in seconds, so we know our value for the rate constant is 1.8 molar to the negative 1 seconds to the negative 1. A special form of the integrated rate law is called the half-life. The half-life is written T1 half, and the half-life is the time it takes for exactly half of the reactants to react. First order half-life formula is given on your formula sheet. So is zero order, so is second order. The first order half-life reaction is the most useful one because if you look at the formulas, there is no concentration dependence in that half-life formula if the reaction is first order. There is a molarity in the formula for zero order and there is a molarity of the reactant for the second order half-life. So for example carbon-14 undergoes a radioactive decay and the half-life is 5730 years. What is the rate constant K for this reaction? So using the above formula, the rate constant K is 0.693 divided by the half-life. And the half-life, we're going to substitute in 5,730 years. So the rate constant K is 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth. We know that this was an overall first order reaction, so if we use the shortcut, 1 minus 1 is 0, throw a negative sign in front of it, this is going to be molarity to the negative 0 power, and the time was measured in years, so this is inverse years. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so we can drop that, and we're left with 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth, inverse years.